Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, and this is Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. I was the head coach of the Punahou Boys varsity tennis team for 22 years, and we were fortunate to win 22 consecutive state championships. This show is based on my books, Beyond the Lines and Beyond the Game, and it's about leadership, character, and creating a superior culture of excellence. My special guest today is a two-time NCAA national champion on our Hawaii men's volleyball team. He is Jakob Tele, and today we are going beyond volleyball. Hey, Jakob, welcome to Beyond the Lines. How's it, Rusty? Thank you for having me. Jakob, it's so great to have you on the show today, but before we get into some of these details, can you tell me a bit about your background? Of course, yeah. Um... So as you guys know, my name is Jakob, uh, also call me Jake, uh, Jacob. I have a lot of different names, but I'm from Norway originally. I'm 22 years old, turning 23 in a week. Um, it's now my fifth year playing for uh, UH Manoa uh, for the men's volleyball team. And yeah, I study uh, environmental planning and policy. It's my final semester next year, so I'm very excited to finish that and also finish my next uh, last season as a player. So it's uh, very exciting, yeah, fit to me, Sean. Jakob, what, what brought you to Hawaii? Ooh, I think first and foremost, it was very foreign to me about going to college and I wanted to test it out. I spoke to a former player at uh, University of Hawaii men's volleyball, Henrik Moll, whose brother is playing uh, beach volleyball, just won the Olympics in Tokyo. And he was actually my high school coach my final year. So I just... I actually just really just easy conversation, just talked to him about like the experience in Hawaii and he just talked to me like all about it, how he loved the culture and just wish he had more years there. And then he got me in touch with Coach Charlie and from there, everything is just history. So I'd say culture is like the main thing I kind of got into Hawaii and just want to like experience some of that, like being all the way from Norway, which is like the almost like entirely opposite. Yeah, it's definitely a, a long, a far ways away. And and Jakob, yes. what what is it about volleyball that you love so much? Yeah, I think for volleyball, because I've tried like almost every sport you can possibly do. Like I did track and field, I did uh, dancing, great dancing, and ballet when I was like very young. I did handball, which is huge in Europe. I played a lot of soccer, of course, as well. Uh, but volleyball was like the last sport that I tried out, and I think just one part that kind of got me like really really like encourage and engage in volleyball, which is like the fact that like you have a whole team and just like how you work together as a team to get better. And just the whole thing about like how you're a part of something bigger than yourselves. And that's like what got me most into volleyball. And just like, that was also the sport that I ended up playing and still play. So, I mean, I just fell in love with it because of the team aspect of the sport. Well, Jakob, you guys won the national championship in 2021. And again, this past year in 2022, tell me about some specific experiences when you guys won it in 2021 and then again in 2022. Yeah, for sure. Um, those both of those years were great. I think they all like had their own story to it. The first year we had a lot of uh, really like leader seniors by Colton Cowell, Rado Parpuna, Patrick Gassman, Jackson Fenneker, and then also Gage Worsley. Uh, the second year, all those guys were gone and like all those guys were also Americans. So it was a huge change as a team to kind of find ourselves and find a role in the team. I was one of the guys that had to step up, take more of a leadership role because I already played that past season. I was like one of three starters with Chaz and G to be on that team playing the 2021 championship game. So I think just that year was just the, this past year in 2022 was just a whole like new like learning curve for me personally, but also like as a team because we have to find collective ways to to still win because we knew that we had a target on our backs to be defending champions and we'll still do it. So we definitely achieved that success. Now, Jakob, how does it look for this year? I mean, you guys have a great chance to do a three-peat. Tell me about it. Yeah, for sure. I mean, <laughs> now that we've already gone twice back to back, then it's always about like making that third run because I think like it hasn't happened since the 80s back when UCLA did it. And actually in the region was a part of that team too, Aussie. Um, but yeah, I think nowadays we have to create our own like history for this year because we always think about like taking one year at a time, taking day by day and like just not like thinking about like what if or what if when or then we're like looking back and then, okay, maybe we didn't do it. But then we just hope that we always can do the right things every day on a daily basis to always like have that goal 
um, and the whole team has that goal in mind. So that's definitely something that we like want to do. And we know what it takes, but also we have to sustain that as it's the whole the challenge of it, but also the beauty. Now, would you agree that the Stan Sheriff Center is the best arena for college volleyball in the country? And how big of an impact do the fans make with you guys when you're competing? They make the whole difference to be honest like i can i can really be like frank about this but i think like the fans is like what the huge part of like our our success as a team as a program and for the school they just all the energy the yeah the love and aloha that they give us is really what takes us to the next level and just playing in the center center when it's packed or just even like every like any kind of game i just remember my first day coming into the arena and i was just like shocked just looking up and all the empty seats and then seeing it full Oh, it's just like the whole just wow like i can't believe volleyball is like such a big sport and brings so many people together from the whole community just that's like the most wonderful thing and i think too just like not even like on the national basis i think that the stand sheriff like has the best environment for volleyball in the whole world like no matter your level high school professional or college too like i think nothing can match the center center when it's when it's rocking oh i completely agree i mean it's so fun to be in there and and Jakob, do you still get nervous when you're competing in some of these big games? Ooh, I think I'm more nervous before the game than when I play, because when I play, I got my game face on. If you watch me play, I'm very like, it looks like like I can do something really bad. <laughs> but I'm I'm very like um, up going, like I laugh a lot, I smile a lot, as you probably can tell. But when I play the game, like my game face is on and like I will do whatever it takes to win. And that also just goes on like being the best role model for my teammates and everyone watching. Um, but yeah, I still get nervous like occasionally, but I think I'm more nervous as a coach than as a player. I, you know, I would when I was coaching, I would tell my players that, you know, if if they weren't nervous, then I'd be nervous because actually being nervous shows that you care about what you're doing. And, and you know, as you play these games. I mean, you just learn to handle the nerves better. And I want to ask you about coach Charlie Wade. What is, what are some things and some reasons why he is such a great coach? Yeah, for sure. Uh, Charlie is uh, like one of the best coaches that I've had in my life. And also like the way he values culture. And that's like the whole thing about like, before I came to the US, I thought culture was something like very like glorified, like American, I can just call it. But then I like, I have Coach Charlie and he like brings me in like to what culture means for him and then how everyone on the team can kind of buy into that as well. And then he also, of course, like the unique value of like being in Hawaii, like you're representing a unique culture and how you can also have that influence um, on the team. So one thing that he brought up is the Alakai matrix that we really stand for, which goes on like all the different values within the team, where either if it's the Koliana responsibility you have for yourself and your teammates, everyone around you, just being a part of something bigger in the community and really representing that the best way possible. Uh, Lokahi, Ikaika, we also have just the emphasis of being well in the, doing well in the classroom, doing well in the weight room, and also thoroughly in the volleyball court, of course and the practice gym. So it really just brings up all those values in together in that matrix. And that is the reason why we have that on our backs, on our practice shirts. It's not because of one of the guys in the team, his name is Alakai, but also because we're representing the Alakai matrix, which is like the definition of leadership and culture and, and the Hawaiian uh, local, local knowledge and yeah, culture. No, I, I love hearing about the Alakai and, and what it all stands for. And Jakob, what, you know, what do you guys do off court to try to really enhance your team bonding? On the court? Uh, off court. Off the court. Okay, good. Uh, off the court, we're just right now, we're very like social. Everyone is like very good friends with each other. We have a great team dynamics as far as that. Uh, we have a couple like social settings where like either we go camping. We did that one time in the fall before 20 hours started, like the hard like hardcore practice uh, period. And then just like, we're always hanging out together, go to the beach together, just like doing all these like laid back, like, cause you're living in Hawaii, you gotta like really just like embrace that and go to the beach as much as you can. But just like doing things together, having good vibe, good connection, we're communicating real well to each other. So that's like some of the things that kind of define us as a team and just always being, uh, being humble to each other. And that's like number one, just caring about each other more than yourself in a sense too. Cause I just serve part of a team. Like you always want to care about your teammates 
to the extent that you care about yourself. So it can't be about me. It's about we. That's like the biggest thing. No, I absolutely agree with you there. And earlier when you were talking about the culture of excellence on your team, um, you guys, you guys are so disciplined. And I mean, that leads, I always say that uh, you need self-discipline because that leads to habits, which lead to success. And you guys have achieved major success. Now, what are your practices like? Yeah, so um, they're very, very, very intense to start with. We're always doing a lot of like surveying, hitting, everything is involving jumps. So we jump for like two and a half hours on a regular basis, which is a lot, but also we have a good balance. Uh, Milan brings up a lot of his Serbian, Serbian uh, workouts and drills that we do always every day. So we always have that same consistency, like in the practice gym, we play a lot too, because the way to get better, like in the games, is about playing more and then you play better. So that's like the whole kind of chart that we have in the practice gym. And uh, we spend a lot of time just being mindful about what we're doing, uh, taking breaks in there to kind of just like talk about like some basic things and things that we have to get better on during the practice gym, but also like when we play games. So I'd say like we always have a pretty good base of like getting into like the higher intense and then the end we kind of drop it down and then just end up stretching, which is also a good part of practice. But they're very, uh, they really touch upon like the stuff that we have to work on a lot. So that's like the biggest thing for us in the practice gym. Yeah, and fundamentals. I mean, <laughs> I mean, having those solid foundations all the time and and um, Jakob, I want to ask you right before you serve. So you're in a big game right before you serve what's your mindset like what are you thinking about just doing what i know i can do uh it's a routine that i've been working on for years and i feel like now like that i have the same routine i just try to make my same the same habit like taking my time looking at the ball looking at who's uh, the receivers across the net um getting the best toss in so i can fly into the court and hit it hit a high thumb up and just go for it when i have the green light that's like the main thing and just being confident because serving is like such a like mental game. Like that's the only part of the game where you're in charge of what you're doing. So you have to really just take your time and just really embrace that. You can make a huge impact by like having good service. So for me, I'm just like, okay, great. I'll give my chance. I'll show you how to stun. <laughs> yeah. You're the hammer huh, out there, Jakob. Oh, I tried to be. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we got choke, we got choke hammers on the team, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's always a great thing for our Hawaii team. <laughs> now, Jakob. Yeah. <laughs> now, Jakob. I mean, obviously, you know, I for me as a coach, I wanted to train my players to practice how they would play and to play how they would practice, and I wanted them to be relentless competitors from the first point to match point. And I always would share that we're always in one of three situations when we're in competition. We're either winning, losing, or tied. But our effort and attitude should always be at a superior level. What are your thoughts? I definitely agree about that, that more on the ethics that you have there. Um, I think a lot of it too is just like being in practice gym, we're always like very aware of like the setting we're in and like trying to make all the situations as we're in the game. So like if we're playing Long Beach or we're playing Long Island, like it doesn't matter. Like we have to come in the same way, execute the same level. Cause if we're not, then we're always, we're going to have a tough time. Like the last season we lost five games, which is I'd say a lot to win. So when the national championship, it was all just like kind of figured out like that consistency and having that same consistency every day, like, all the habits, like everything you're like, all the choices you're making every single day is going to accumulate into a bigger thing. And that is to win and be successful. So then if everyone can do that and they flex on your cho uh, choices and decisions in everyday life, then I think you're on a good path. Uh, I, I like hearing these insights from you. Yeah, I always say that little things matter because little victories matter. And these little victories lead to big victories. And that's what you guys do. And and Jakob, you have both of my books, and I want to know what's something that stood out to you in it? Yeah, so I was fortunate to read, read your books. Uh, I actually got one of them right here. I think it's your first book, if I'm not wrong. Um, and I think just like you just like said, like that simple, those like three words you had in the sentence where it says little things matter, like that's everything. 
because I really think like building a culture, I think that's the, the chapter that I was reading about building a culture and becoming successful. It's about the little things. So like all the decisions that you make every day and just ensuring that that is like on par with the dreams that you have for tomorrow. That's like the saying, like, so when you have a goal as a team and individual, individual goals as well, you want to always make sure that your decisions and your habits are really on par with that goal and dream. Because I think if you don't, if you lack consistency and you also lack motivation, it's going to be tough to achieve that goal. So you're always going to be kind of driven, have like your inner coach, like which is another aspect of the book that I really like. Just having you're having your physical coach, but also you have to know like your inner coach and inner drive because you're the one you're responsible for your development and the way you contribute. So then you just have to embrace that part of it. So that's yeah. I'll, again, good read of the book. So I just really enjoyed it. And it learned me, it taught me a lot, but also I can see a lot of the themes that Coach Charlie has been saying in the practice gym and to us guys, and also like things that I've also been reflecting on myself as a player and individual. No, oh, I love hearing all of that, Jakob. And, and you are the captain on court. I mean, you're the leader on the court with your team. What do you focus on as the leader on court in these games? Yeah. So um, what I try to do uh, the most, like I'm, I think I'm a very different character, like from practice to, to the to real games, because in the practice I can I can fool around, like have a lot of fun. But I still try to do that in the games. But I'm also more uh, serious, just like personal character. You got the picture right there. I'm pointing at someone. I think he's Gage. He just made an incredible dig as usual. But I think I'm just like trying to bring more confidence to the guys because I'm the setter. I'm dishing up everyone to to look good and be successful in the race, like throughout the game. So we can be good as a team. But I think just like, I want to be confident. I want to be like someone you can look at and be like, okay, he's like really into it. And like, he wants to, he wants to win the game. And then people can just like, yeah, just learn from that. And just also be in the same, the same kind of game mode. I feel like, so we always try to be like confident, humble, and very encouraged in the game. So that's like some of the, the three big things things that we're kind of doing and what I want to also get out as a, as a leader and a setter, because that is not true, like a leader position. Now, Jakob, teams can have great players, um, but that doesn't necessarily guarantee victories. Um, these great players, they got to play together. They got to work together. They got to execute together. They really got to play as one unit. What are your thoughts about that? Because if they don't, that's where the word upsets come in, right? Mm -hmm. Definitely. And I think you can also see that like in, in pro, because that's when you can like really just like privatize and capitalize on like the best players all around the world. And you see in Italy, like that is the best league in the world right now. And you have a team of like all the best players on like each national team. But still, they're not winning because as a team, they're not just not good enough in the end against teams that are maybe weaker and like they have less of a budget, but they're still, they're just more cohesive. And I think that is a key word is cohesiveness because you just want to really build a connection between the guys and like perform well as a team. Cause when you think about individual stats, like they really don't matter at all. It's about the team stats. And if your team wins, then you're successful. That's what goes into it. So I definitely agree with what you're saying. Like you need to have one thing is having good players, but just having the right attitudes is like another thing that you have to do to be successful in the game. Now, as a coach, for me, I, I would always try to identify my players' strengths, and then I would want to make my players' strengths stronger because that's why they made the team is because of their strengths. Not really focusing so much on the weaknesses. Yeah, we want to improve a weakness every so often, but it was more about really making the strength stronger. What are your thoughts about that? I agree. If you can't make uh, one of your strengths to your play to your advantage, then you're not going to be you're not going to be the factor that contributes to the win or whatever that is in the sport or in life. So I think it's really important to find your strengths and kind of articulate them with the coach or as a team and kind of build off of that. Like on our team now, we have a lot of guys who are uh, maybe you can call them undersized, but they're still just jumping incredibly high and they're they're also so quick. So like we're trying to use more tempo, like we're trying to build up those strengths. So for me, like, I guess I'm the quarterback in like the American like sports setting. So like I'm building the offense and then I want to make sure that I can use all the strengths and kind of build off of that so we can use that to our advantage. I love it. And, and Jakob, what, what, what's a big adversity or a big challenge that, that you dealt with in your life so far? I think it's gotta be the one it's gotta be COVID-19. <laughs> I think that stands the same for, 
99% of the whole world right now. Uh, it's definitely COVID because it just changed the way we think about everything really like in everyday life and how much that of an impact can just force you to think differently about things and also just like forcing you to think about the stuff that you can control. So for me personally, like I have to build new habits. Uh, in COVID, I learned to do a lot of things that I wanted to know. So I learned to cook. That's one big thing. Uh, I learned how to cook and I just learned how to get better um, in the classroom, build habits, routines that would kind of sustain me for the rest of the years until graduation, which I just completed my undergrad last semester. And now I'm doing my master's in another year. So just like building habits are, are going to be effective. You can still be productive, even though like you're in a lockdown. Then you can still maximize the thing that you can do like virtually and also still get some time to be outside. And even though I couldn't go to the beach because I went to Norway, but I still got to enjoy the time out in the snow and cold. So that was that was so good. But yeah, just definitely COVID that kind of changed the way I thought, I thought about life and also about uh, volleyball. So, okay, so Jakob, what's some of your favorite dishes you like to cook? Ooh, I'm trying to learn how to make poi. Which oh, is a big really? One. Yeah, my first year I was not a big fan, but then over the years I got more poi, and also having that with poke, I think that kind of changed everything. That's a game changer. Um, but also, yeah, poke because I love fish. I love go chop pole or trolling with a pole band squad. So uh, I think poke and poi is like the the favorite, but like I'm so trying to figure out those two though. Like I want to open a restaurant eventually. And then it depends if I come back to Hawaii, like I want to open like something more like Sanigi and like a coffee shop. And then I saw like, if I go back to Norway, I want to open up like a poke shop or like where they sell spicy eye, yeah, cause that is my favorite. Well, yeah, ya- I keep it Jakob, simple as a student. <laughs> you, you are definitely local. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, Jakob, when you reflect back on your young life so far, what's a what's a valuable lesson you've learned? Ooh, I think that definitely will be just taking taking things a day at a time, like not thinking too far in the future or too far in the past, but just keeping it day by day and being mindful. I think that is like one thing too. It's just like mindfulness and how well you go about the things that you're doing right now, like staying in the moment, I think is the biggest lesson that I've, that I've had over the course of my life and just, yeah, taking it day by day, minute by minute. Yeah. I I like it because that's present focus, right? We can't really worry too much about the past and not really get too tied up into the future, but really focusing on the present. And what's a, what's some, what's a, a, the best advice you ever received from somebody? Uh, well, I watched uh, Top Gun Maverick like a couple of weeks ago and they always said, don't think, just do. And I think that goes for the same though, like in life as well. I just, uh, well, I've, I've heard that before. I heard it from the movie, of course, but I think just like that part, like just doing, like don't think about it, don't overthink it. Because as soon as you're overthinking, you will change the way that you were like originally trying to do it. Just like, just be comfortable, be confident and just go for it. Like stay, stay in the moment and just no, do what you normally do. Like don't change anything up. Keep it simple and keep it, keep it confident. Oh, what a great movie that Top Gun Maverick. Yeah. I do one. Yeah. I enjoyed it. Not as, <laughs> not as well as the original, but it was so good to follow up, even though like it's 30 years later. Yeah. So, yeah. The com- movie. Inspirational. Completely agree with you. And, and Jakob, you, you're somebody that have achieved greatness and, Greatness can be defined in many ways. How, how would you define greatness? I think I would define greatness by consistency and being consistent about what you do. Because once you've like developed the good routines every day, then you can kind of build off of that. And I think if you're consistent with it, eventually you will achieve your goals and also be less individual or your team goals that will kind of sustain your, your greatness and success in life and in sports. So I think just consistency being like on top of your things every day. Um, and yeah, like doing what you know you're best at and also trying to find your weakest links and work on those. So like you're ultimately just a better overall version of yourself. I think it's the one, but I think that is the question though, defining greatness. I think, I think there's a lot of different definitions, but that is my personal one. And, you know, from the outside looking in, when I'm watching you play with your team, I mean, you really uh, inspire your teammates. I mean, it's 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 so obvious to me when you're playing about, you know, how much better you just kind of help your team rise to the occasion. 
I mean, and I always say the greatest leaders always build other great leaders. That's what makes them greater, but it's the, it's to help them inspire. And what are your thoughts about that? Yeah. I mean, I couldn't agree more. First of all, thank you for saying that inspire others. That's like one thing I strive for. Uh, but I think that is, that is like what you have to do. Cause if you want to sustain culture and the team or wherever you're at in business or just social aspects, you always want to encourage people around you to also be, to be leaders. And that goes into the lead by example that if your actions are the right ones, then people will see that and they will like also do that as well, which kind of builds that culture progressively. And that is like maybe the reason why like the culture, like in the UH men's level program has been so like, it's always been there. Like, even though the results have been coming up over the years, I think that is a product of the uh, culture that the people in all the way in 2010 and like even in 2002 and three, like that people built from there and just, put that foundation out there so people can follow. And then, cause when I was a freshman, like I was looking up to the seniors, like Joe, um, Brett Rosemeyer, Stein, a lot of those like really talented guys and yeah, just learning for them as well. And not to forget Dalton Solberg as well. So I think that is, that is the thing. You like want to express yourself and you want to have the younger guys kind of look at you and the guy like, Whoa, okay. I want to do that too. So. Jakob, I want to ask you one more thing before we wrap up. Obviously, communication is a huge part of leadership. And for me, I would always share with my team that I don't give good feedback or bad feedback. I give honest feedback. How, how do you communicate with your teammates? I mean, were they are, are you very blunt where you can say positive and negative things to them? I probably just joke around for a second and then go like into the serious things, <laughs> but no, I'm always like trying to work on things for the guys offensively or just like as a whole, like whatever can help the team. Um, so like, I think I'm pretty direct. I will say like things here and there that would help you. Like I want anything that will hurt you or like the way you perform. I'm like, my intention is always to help the guys around me and make them, make them better. So I think that is like what I go with, like every day in the practice gym, I, my whole goal of the day is just making, making people around me better, making each other better. And I think if everyone can have that same mentality, then awesome. That's the whole goal. Jakob, there's no doubt that you are an exceptional volleyball player. I mean, one of the, if not the best volleyball player in the United States right now, but A little too much. you, you, are you have such you're more of i mean i love your character you have exceptional character and i really want to thank you for taking time to be on the show today well thank you Russell, for having me i enjoyed it and it's a good talk and i think that's an important conversation to have like um within your team and business and in life just always touching upon like these topics and kind of elaborate on them it's a good good discussion so i really appreciate it thank you mahalos thanks Jakob. And thank you for watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. For more information, please visit RustyKomori.com. And my books are available on Amazon and Barnes and & Noble. I hope that Jakob and I will inspire you to create your own superior culture of excellence and to find your greatness and help others find theirs. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.